Welcome to this segment of Wellivate. Today we're going to learn how to make quick easy soups. They're not going to be clear broth soups. We're going to make vegetable soups typically that you would have as a, as a cream soup, except for we're not going to be using cream. I'm going to show you different ideas on how to thicken the soups um, instead of using a flour product or a milk based product. I'm going to be using uh, cauliflower today and we're going to be using butternut squash. So for the butternut squash, we're going to put it directly in exactly like this without cutting it into the oven and let it start baking. And then the cauliflower, we're going to steam it. We're going to set our oven to 350 for the butternut squash. And I'm going to start it. I'm also going to put the butternut squash on something so the juices don't seep down into the bottom of the actual uh, oven. We've chopped up our cauliflower, it's a full head. It's around a small to medium size cauliflower as you can see. Um, we have around an inch to, inch to two inches of water, enough just to barely touch the cauliflower. On the bottom you'll see that I have a steamer thing that's removable. This is unnecessary, you can just put it right in water and boil it up. And you wanna boil it until it's tender enough to put in the blender and puree. So our cauliflower is boiled and it's really tender. Be careful, of course, because the pot's going to be hot. So it is soft and tender. As you can see, it's quite steamy. Typically, I'm going to actually use some of the um, water that's in that cauliflower just because a lot of the nutrition is going to be in that broth. I always use my blender. If you're going to buy a blender, I would recommend buying a Vitamix if you're going to be really serious. This one is not a very expensive one. I got it from Canadian Tire here in Canada. It's called Harley. Um, it does the trick. It's not a high-end one. I still do love my Vitamix, but I just wanted to show you guys that you can use like a $150 to $200 blender without spending five to $600 and still, you know, be quick and easy in the kitchen. Like I said at the beginning, I have this colander that you can purchase and it just holds your vegetables so it's easier to take out. And then I'm going to pour some of this broth right into the, into the, uh, into the blender. Not a lot. I don't want it to be too, I personally like my soups a little bit thick. So I'm going to just put it as I need it. And I'm also going to add some coconut milk. You don't have to add coconut milk. You can add almond milk. You don't even have to add milk if you don't want to, but I do like a little bit of that smooth texture. So I'm going to put some coconut milk in there. Probably equal parts to water and equal parts coconut milk. Now here's the trick. Instead of using flour to thicken up your soups, you can use potatoes, but then you would be deviating a little bit off of your keto paleo diet. Um, it, depending on which one you're following, if you use beans, you're still going to be deviating off of that as well. But typically, I will use a potato to actually thicken my soup, or I'll use beans. And the beans that I really like using are the butter beans. Okay, the butter beans are great, they have a, a plain flavor, but it thickens the soup up and it adds some protein as well. So, I'm going to add some beans. I'm going to add around to start, I'm going to add around five tablespoons. So for flavoring in my soups, I always use a vegetable bouillon of some sort. I'm really partial to the Go Bio. It's a bio um, product, so meaning organic product. There's not a lot of sodium, still higher sodium than you know most is accustomed to, um, but I usually will use this in all of my soups. Now I never really use recipes. At the end of each of these segments or these vlogs, I'm going to actually write some fundamentals down for you guys so you can see how I adjusted the recipe, but I always will do it to taste. 
So if you're not familiar with the different tastes, then look at the vlog that has to do with the five essential flavors of cooking and you'll get more familiar. And as you start cooking in your kitchen and exploring, then you'll be able to fine tune your recipes to your personal preference. So for this, which is a full head of cauliflower, around small to medium sized cauliflower, I have put, I'd say probably around two cups of liquid, half of the actual stock from the steaming of the cauliflower and half coconut. For this, just to start, oh, and as well, I don't forget the butter beans. I put the butter beans in there as well. And for this, I'm gonna start by just doing three cubes, three cubes of the vegetable. So I'm gonna push that down into the liquid so it's easy to actually blend. I'm going to put my lid on this and I'm going to blend it and then we're going to start tasting. So this appears to be pretty thick, so we're going to try it. I personally, like I said, I like it a little bit thicker. So I'm going to taste it. In fact, that's actually almost perfect. So I used three cubes of the vegetable bouillon. I put five teaspoons, sorry, five tablespoons of the butter bean. I put around two cups of stock. Um, which was half stock from the actual steaming of the cauliflower and half coconut. And I don't even need any salt, so I'm not going to put any salt because these uh, cubes have enough. So bon appetit! Okay, now we're gonna do our second soup, which is the butternut squash. I've taken it out of the oven. As you can see, again, I put it right directly in without having to do all of the chopping. So that, again, this soup is going to taste more smoky than the cauliflower soup. So I'm gonna cut it now. I'm gonna cut it right down the middle. I'm gonna take the seeds out. Easy peasy, I don't have to scrape hard because it's not raw. When you peel it, it might be a little bit uh, slimy when you peel the skin. You can always put it in the freezer for a little bit longer if you want. But typically I'm just gonna cut it into small pieces and then peel the skin and then put it directly into our blender again. If it's still sticking, you might want to use a knife, just a shearing knife, a little tiny knife, to get the skin off, but again, it's way easier than doing this when it's raw. We don't have any stock with this soup because we didn't steam it, like the cauliflower soup. So we're gonna just use coconut milk on that one. So we're going to use coconut milk. If I can get the jar open. I don't store any of my stuff in the cans. I always use mason jars and glass as much as possible just for the toxins in the plastics and in the cans. So I'm going to do around a cup to a cup and a half of the coconut milk. I'm going to add our good gobayo vegetables, um, vegetable cubes. I'm only going to use one for the half of the actual squash because I'm going to actually use a product called Patox, which is a pretty clean curry paste. In fact, um, I use this a lot, whether I use this mixing it in a dip with the avocado mayonnaise or whether I put this in soups or add it to stir fries, but it's clean. There's not a lot of chemicals in it. 
It comes in many different flavors. I think there's three or four different flavors. There's a tikka, there's a curry, a mild curry, a strong curry. I'm gonna put around a, a teaspoon, a heaping teaspoon in, and we'll just play by ear the flavor with that. Again, I usually store my stuff in glass so I have butter beans in here. For the half of this soup to thicken it up, I'm going to do three teaspoons. I'm going to actually do three and a half because I have it. And then I'm going to blend. I can tell it's already a little bit too thick. I don't want to make it too rich with the coconut milk, so I'm going to add some water. I'm going to start just with a quarter of a cup of water. Just to thin it out a little bit. spoon and try the taste of it. Again, I encourage you to play around in the kitchen and really, you know, play around with the five different flavors that we talked about earlier. It needs a little bit of salt. The vegetable bouillon will add some salt in there, but you might need to add it as well. So typically I will add a pinch of salt. I don't want the curry to be too strong. I want it just to be a hint of a flavor. So I'm gonna just put a pinch of my rock salt, my rock sea salt, the gray, the gray sea salt. I'm gonna blend it a little bit more. Get a clean spoon to retaste it. That's pretty good. So what I would do from here, when I serve it, I would put some cracked uh, pepper on there, as well as some uh, chopped red green onions, um, or some shallots, something that you might have even from your garden, like cilantro bits or something, just to garnish it, um, and then you're ready to go. So stay tuned for the next, um, next soup session, which is gonna be on bone broths. Bon appetit.